Now a few days ago, our friend Katie Hancock here asked this question, one that pondered whether crowding your boat with followers was feasible, and one that has now opened the door to this very video. So thank you very much, Katie, for that, because it got me thinking. I asked then, if followers could sail with you, then why bother fighting the Crab King without him? I really don't know how viable any of these tests today will be, but I guess that's why they call them tests. So let's get to it. And although I'll likely get around to a full guide on the Crab King once he's actually a boss that means anything, I will still just touch on the basics here. He spawns in a ring of sea stacks out in the swell ocean the part of the ocean right following the coastal ocean right off land. Unfortunately though, he can still spawn anywhere he wishes within said swell ocean, and this may sometimes result in him spawning all the way out near the lunar island because, you know, the lunar island is land, so the swell ocean water precedes the lunar coastal waters, that is. And if you need further distinctions, know that the coastal water is lighter and right off land, while swell water is much darker and just a ways off land. Easy enough. I'd like to make a quick suggestion before we venture on, however. Messages in a bottle should absolutely have a chance to pinpoint the location of the Crab King, even if it's after you have to visit Pearl or something. Just a thought. And speaking of Pearl, if one wants, they can choose to progress through her hidden quest to obtain her very own Pearl for the fight. You can complete tasks, like drying meat on all of her drying racks, planting a number of flowers around her bees to start honey production, or even plant and fertilize several berry bushes around her island to lend a hand. But why are we doing this and what does it accomplish? Well, my friends, it's all about friendship. For you see, there are many hidden tasks to do in order to make the Krabby Hermit not so crabby anymore. And in the end, she offers up her pearl. This pearl can be socketed into the Crab King for a far more difficult fight, but a better reward at the end. Or so we assume at this point, because for now, the actual reward does nothing. But you get the idea. Watch these for more because we have a job to do. And the job will require plenty of smashing from us. Depending on the spawning location of the boss, we may have to relocate our potential helpers closer to him to make the loyalty process a tad easier on us. So, running around smashing potential follower homes is the place to begin. Pig houses are found in and around the Pig King area, in deciduous forest biomes and likely still near the fat man himself, and of course in the forest biomes too, at least primarily. Do a bunch of smash and grab and soon you'll just bring it all together for player built pig houses. They are quite the expensive little buggers if you really look at them, but with pig farms and just the abundance of houses, I really wouldn't worry too much. Now, it's all up to how they perform in the fight. But hold your stinking horses, friends, because pigmen ain't our only option here. Bunnymen live down under, and while they can be found individually in the wilds, occasional patches of mustry forests here and there, and more, they truly do reside in villages found in the biomes with our cave exits instead. Now, chances are you won't get as lucky as me with the numbers, but you should still be all right. Bunnyman Farms can make up the difference at the end of the day. But hey, look everyone, more smashing to do. Smashing grabbing Bunnyman is very similar to that of pigs. However, it is highly advised to do so when it's actually morning up above, as all the Bunnymen down here will remain in their huts. So this allows us to just handle each one individually without getting overwhelmingly munched to death. It's simple, smash, murder, repeat, and collect, easy enough. And although I do find bunny huts to be easier to mass produce, that is not to say that their homes are easy to make at the end of the day. Thankfully, both their huts and the bunnies themselves drop the carrots and puffs needed to make them. And also that carrots are just simply found around these villages to begin with. However, you will kinda need to hope for a healthy amount of bunnymen spawns anyway. That, or just get to setting up bunnymen farms to again, make up the difference. Option number three, however. 
Merms. One of the more interesting and potentially involved options, though. They do have the benefit of being accessible by any survivor, as long as said survivor is wearing a clever disguise, and having them follow you is as simple as offering them seeds. But who is to say that the Crab King is in an accessible spot near the swamp? For you see, without a word, we would have to add them as followers and then run them to wherever we need to go to get to the Crab King. Wasting plenty of time, potentially. Good news, though, is that it does look like the followers follow us on the boats, so this test is not dead in the water already. But do toss a word into the mix, and things get interesting. Not only can she craft and locate her own merm houses where she wishes to, as long as it's marsh turf that you planted on, that is, the craft itself is way easier to make than the previous two mob houses by far. Only issue is that it's only one merm per home, which could be a problem, as just enlisting them within the swamp, way easier. Four merms per house there. However, let us not forget about the Merm King. With one ascended to the fishy throne, all merms in the world receive a health and damage increase, while Wirt herself sees her stats increase too. Minus the damage, of course. Not bad at all. And to top it all off, there are always Merm Flortifications. Special merm houses that spawn royal merm guards if there is a Merm King present. These merm guards already have more health and deal more damage than regular merms. So with the king, they're even better. That said, we won't actually be using them today, because not only are they quite expensive compared to the rest, there may actually be a fatal flaw with using any type of merm for this fight. But before we get to that, let's talk kit. Hambat or better with no real exceptions there. And believe it or not, a magic staff is actually going to be very useful for this fight. How useful? Let's just say the literal cornerstone of the entire thing. We're gonna need ice staffs. A healthy amount of them, actually. I shoot for at least seven to eight total. Although a certain method for this fight is definitely gonna have you using less, which is good. As for armor and healing, if you do the fight right, you won't need any of it. That said, boat patches are the second most important thing needed for this bout. Whether you choose to do it with any of these ways shown here today or otherwise, do not forget them. You will absolutely fail in seconds without them. But now it's the moment of truth. Is going through the trouble of amassing a mob following even worth it? Well, maybe, but there are some issues to address. I will start, however, by saying this. These are all very possible given the right circumstances and amount of equipment. And heck, the pigmen even did light years better than I could have ever predicted, and may have even topped both my normal merm test up in the left corner there and the upgraded merm test at the right. Then again, it really could have just been simple luck for that test because here's the problem with using pigmen and merms. They kite. Both groups of mobs are constantly running around on these relatively tiny platforms, all things considered, at least in this context. All the while you, as the player, are trying to do what you have to do in order to survive this fight. So you are just continuously running into each other, pushing one another in the wrong direction, and quite frankly, preventing jobs from getting done. It's chaos. The Crab King fight really is quite difficult at the end of the day. And the reason being are both his geyser attack and his claw attack. Now both of these are easily handled, yes, as we can prevent the geyser attack with those ice staffs we made earlier, and the claws can be focused on by us while our followers damage the king. But when you can't even reach the claws or perform the needed ice blast on the king because everything is in the way and there's too much going on so you can't keep track of things, the problems snowball very quickly. Doable? abso frickin lootly Worth the hair pulling? Absolutely not. There was just too much going on. Therefore, too many things to go wrong at any second. This fight requires constant monitoring and action throughout the entire thing. If you can't or don't do that, you're screwed in seconds. So then, how do the Bunnymen stack up? Do they end up failing for the same reasons as well? Absolutely not. For Bunnymen, don't kite. Thus, they just stand there and deliver, as they say. And not only that, Bunnymen deal high damage and attack very fast. So fast, in fact, that they can actually counter the Crab King's healing phase without you 
doing anything. That said, you helping out in any way goes a long way. So, freezing the Crab King even during his healing phase is absolutely advised, even if it is but for a second or two. Now, it ain't all sunshine and rainbows, however. The fact that bunnymen just stand around the front of the boat and don't move means you likely won't be able to reach the front of the boat yourself. This not only means limited player dealt damage to the king potentially, it could really screw you if one or two of his claws attach to a side that you simply can't reach. The claws deal roughly 30 damage to the boat as they first latch on, and then proceed to deal periodic damage unless you clear them off by killing them. And this is truly where those boat patches come into play. I found that I used a lot, no matter the method. However, every fight will be different, of course. Honestly, unless you have to deal with the claws now and then, unlike me, who had to just sit there as they attached to where I couldn't reach them, this method just has you sitting back and freezing the king to stop his geysers. That's it. It is unbelievably easy with just 10 or so bunny men. So, get to it. And there you have it everyone, a video on testing potential methods against the Crab King. All in all, it looks like Bunnymen should be your only option, really, if you are looking to do it this way. But again, I think I'm going to dive more into the Crab King down the line. This was just a fun quote unquote, what if type of video sort of deal. But thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, don't get sunk, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.